this, uh, Ryan. But what I want you guys just to understand real quickly, because we're not going to have time really spent through it. If I give you two functions and I say, hey, are these inverses of each other? Right? You could obviously work to go ahead and get to see if one is going to be the inverse of the other by using your operations. Or the other way to prove that they're going to be inverses is by working this. If you do f of g of x equals x, and you have g of f of x equals x. So if you do the composition of your functions both ways and you get x, then they are going to be inverses of each other. So you have two functions are inverses if and only if the composition of your two functions of f of x of g of x equals x and the composition of g of f of x equals x. So let's go ahead and see if we can prove that these are going to be inverses. Now obviously we already checked one to go and see, but let's go and see how the composition looks out and see if it provides us with x or not. So if I do f of g of x, that means I'm going to plug my g of x function into my f of x function, which gives me 6 times 1 6 x plus 3 minus 2. All right, so when I apply distributive property, I get x plus 18 minus 2, which equals x um, plus 16. So obviously, did that end up giving us x? No, so therefore you can quickly say that, oh, those are not inverses of each other. OK? Because obviously it has to satisfy both of these, both of these statements for them to be inverses of each other. All right? So by applying the composition, if you don't get the identity function, you know that you're not going to have inverses. So you can't just do it the other way. The other way does not prove that you have inverses. That just shows if you have inverses.